2020 election about then President Donald Trump. McConnell reportedly called Trump stupid, ill-tempered, and a despicable human being. What he's now saying about those re remarks? That's next on CNN News. In this final stretch before the election, we are seeing a familiar attack line make a serious comeback on the campaign trail. I put out my medical records, he won't put out his medical records. And you have to ask, why is his staff doing that? And it may be because they think he's just not ready and unfit. I think people should take cognitive tests, not because of the age, but because of something else. Now, here's the problem. They say it's unconstitutional. Okay? But I would love to see cognitive tests. I don't think she could pass a cognitive test. The Harris campaign is also using events like this one to try to make its point. When Trump abruptly ended a town hall a few days ago and then just danced on stage for almost 40 minutes. Now, we should note in the past, Trump has said that he would release his health data. A Harris released hers earlier this week. Joining us now is CNN's Chris Wallace. He is the host of Who's Talking to Chris Wallace with new episodes streaming right now on Max. And he also anchors the Chris Wallace Show with new episodes airing Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time on CNN, also on CNN Max. And he has, where do you find so the time? Oh, he has a new book out called Countdown 1960, the behind the scenes story of the 312 days that changed America's politics forever. Good subtitle there. I really like that. But uh, back to Trump yes. and uh, what we're sort of observing. And I wonder if you think, as someone who, of course, yes, he's going to be 78 years old if elected. He'd be the oldest person to become president. Are these questions, these criticism, is it warranted? Well, people have to judge for themselves, but I think that there's plenty of evidence out there, Brianna, that could give people cause. Clearly, what happened uh, at, at the town hall where he just stopped and is sitting there swaying to music for 40 minutes as people leave. There have been some awfully strange comments. The interesting thing is after the debate between Trump and Biden back in June, the polls showed that Trump led Biden by 29 points on the issue of who is better physically and mentally fit to be president. After the Trump-Harris debate, now, uh, Harris leads Trump by 20 points on the exact same issue. So this question of mental and physical fitness to be president, which was working for Trump against Biden, is now very much working for Harris against Trump. And this is something that you and, and the, the panelists on your show are going to be exploring uh, th this weekend. How concerned do you think that voters should be about his mental acuity? You know, it's up. It's up to them. As I say in the poll, they, they certainly are. It, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I've been reading a lot about this recently. There's something, as people get older and diminish, there's something called disinhibition, basically that they lose their inhibitions. They lose their filters. My kids sometimes say that about me. Uh, Trump was on Fox and Friends this morning, and he said, you know what I'm going after I leave you guys? And they're all on the air. He said, I'm going up to meet Rupert Murdoch, and I'm going to tell him that he shouldn't have any ads attacking me and he shouldn't have any Democrats who are... Now, this is something I can understand him perhaps thinking. I'm not sure it made sense, and you could tell from the discomfort of the Fox and Friends anchors, they were not pleased that this was being shared, what Trump was going to be talking in a few minutes to Rupert Murdoch about. I think sometimes as people get older, they're out of you-know-whats. They're fresh out of them. And so they just say whatever <laughs> they want, you know? Um, I do want to switch gears a little bit and talk about some news that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has made. The Associated Press obtained excerpts from a book that is set to be released about him, which claim that McConnell called then-President Trump, quote, stupid, that he called him a despicable human being and a narcissist. Uh, McConnell, in a statement saying, whatever I may have said about Trump pales in comparison to what J.D. Vance, Lindsey Graham, and others have said about him, but we are all on the same team now. Uh, what do you think about this business? I'm not at all surprised that McConnell feels that way. He was pretty clear and, and really for about two or three years after January 6th refused one to meet with Trump or even to say his name in public. What, what I find most troubling about this is he, he believes all that, he says all that on the record and some of it in, in, in private, 
But he's going to vote for Donald Trump. He has said, we're all on the same team. He has endorsed Donald Trump, who has attacked his wife, who is Chinese, in, in uh, uh, racial terms. And yet he seems to feel that his political influence, his political position is more important than his personal feelings or principle. And, and I find that troubling, that, that a guy could be insulted as he has been by Trump and be offended as he has by Trump, and yet he's going to vote for Trump to be the next president of the United States. And, and Chris, in, in your book, um, you write about the 1960 election between JFK and, and Richard Nixon, and that goes into uh, this race that very well could have been stolen. And, and you compare that um, to these elections in 2020 and, and 2024. So what, what parallels did you find between uh, the Nixon-Kennedy race and, and this one that we're watching today? Alex, I think 1960 sort of sets where we are now and have been since 2020 on its head. That is an election where there really is evidence that it may, I'll say may, have been stolen. Rampant vote fraud in Illinois for Kennedy, rampant vote fraud in Texas for Kennedy. Nixon had to decide, was he going to contest it, or was he going to observe and participate in the peaceful transfer of power? This is at the height of the Cold War. Are you going to have the question of who's president? And Richard Nixon, who's not generally seen as a great moral figure, decides, no, I, it's unthinkable that we're not going to let the country know who the president is. He concedes, he meets with, uh, with Kennedy, and on January 6th, as the vice president, he presides over the counting of the electoral vote and congratulates Kennedy as the next president of the United States. It's an incredible chapter. Incidentally, just made the New York Times bestseller list. Congratulations. Yes, hey, big congrats. Look at you. That's great. Thank you. It's the subtitle, isn't it? It grabs <laughs> no, the audience. It's those 400 pages in between. It is. It's a great, it's a great cover and a great book. Chris Wallace, thank, thank you very much. much. And we'll be